Contemporary Latin is the form of the Latin language used since the end of the 19th century. Various kinds of contemporary Latin can be distinguished, including the use of Latin words in taxonomy, and the fuller ecclesiastical use in the Catholic Church. But living or spoken Latin is the primary subject of this article. Latin is still present in words or phrases used in many languages around the world, as a relic of the great importance of New Latin, which was the formerly dominant international lingua franca down to the 19th century in a great number of fields. Some minor communities also use Latin in their speech. The official use of Latin in previous eras has survived at a symbolic level in many mottos that are still being used and even coined in Latin of this day. Old mottos like E Pluribus Unum, found in 1776 on the seal of the United States, along with Inuit Coiptus and Novus Ordo Seclorum, and adopted by an Act of Congress in 1782, are still in use. Similarly, current pound sterling coins are minted with the Latin inscription Elizabeth middle dot two middle dot d middle dot g middle dot reg middle dot f middle dot d. The official motto of the multilingual European Union, adopted as recently as 2000, is the Latin in varietate concordia. Similarly, the motto on the Canadian Victoria Cross is in Latin, perhaps due to Canada's bilingual status. Some common phrases that are still in use in many languages have remained fixed in Latin, like the well-known dramatis personae or habeas corpus. In fields as varied as mathematics, physics, astronomy, medicine, pharmacy, biology, and philosophy, Latin still provides internationally accepted names of concepts, forces, objects, and organisms in the natural world. The most prominent retention of Latin occurs in the classification of living organisms and the binomial nomenclature devised by Carl Linnaeus. Although the rules of nomenclature used today allow the construction of names which may deviate considerably from historical norms. Another continuation is the use of Latin names for the constellations and celestial objects. As well as planets and satellites, whose surface features have been given Latin selenographic toponyms since the 17th century. Symbols for many of those chemical elements of the periodic table known in ancient times reflect and echo their Latin names, like O for Orum and Fe for Ferrum. Latin has also contributed a vocabulary for specialized fields such as anatomy and law which has become part of the normal, non-technical vocabulary of various European languages. Latin continues to be used to form international scientific vocabulary and classical compounds. Separately, more than 56% of the vocabulary used in English today derives ultimately from Latin, either directly or through French. The Catholic Church has continued to use Latin. Two main areas can be distinguished. One is its use for the official version of all documents issued by the Holy See, which has remained intact to the present. Although documents are first drafted in various vernaculars, the official version is written in Latin by the Latin Letters Office. The other is its use for the liturgy, which has diminished after the Second Vatican Council of 1962-65, but to some degree resurged half a century later when Pope Benedict XVI encouraged the Latin Mass. After the Church of England published the Book of Common Prayer in English in 1559, a 1560 Latin edition was published for use at universities such as Oxford and the leading public schools. Where the liturgy was still permitted to be conducted in Latin, and there have been several Latin translations since. Most recently a Latin edition of the 1979 USA Anglican Book of Common Prayer has appeared. Latin has also survived to some extent in the context of classical scholarship. Some classical periodicals, like Mnemosyne and the German Hermes, to this day accept articles in Latin for publication. Latin is used in most of the introductions to the critical editions of ancient authors in the Oxford Classical Text series, and it is also nearly always used for the apparatus criticus of ancient Greek and Latin texts. The University Order at the University of Cambridge makes a speech in Latin marking the achievements of each of the honorands at the annual honorary degree congregations, as does the Public Order at the Encenia Ceremony at the University of Oxford. Harvard and Princeton also have Latin salutatory commencement addresses every year. The Charles University in Prague and many other universities around the world conduct the awarding of their doctoral degrees in Latin. Other universities and other schools issue diplomas written in Latin. Brown, Sewanee, and Bard College also hold a portion of their graduation ceremonies in Latin. The song Gaudia Musigitur is sung at university opening or graduation ceremonies throughout Europe. Living Latin, also known as spoken Latin, is an effort to revive Latin as a spoken language and as the vehicle for contemporary communication and publication. Involvement in this Latin revival can be a mere hobby or extend to more serious projects for restoring its former role as an international auxiliary language. 
after the decline of Latin at the end of the new Latin era started to be perceived, there were attempts to counteract the decline and to revitalize the use of Latin for international communication. In 1815, Miguel Olmo wrote a booklet proposing Latin as the common language for Europe, with the title Osha Villodricensia ad Octo Magnus Principes qui Vindobon Anno MDCCCXV Pacem Orbis Sangzurunt, de Lingua Latina et Civitate Latina Fundanda Liber Singularis. In the late 19th century, Latin periodicals advocating the revived use of Latin as an international language started to appear. Between 1889 and 1895, Karl Heinrich Ulrichs published in Italy his Alaud. This publication was followed by the Vox Urbis, De Literis et Bonus Artibus Commentarius, published by the architect and engineer Ari Steed Leonori from 1898, twice a month, until 1913, one year before the outbreak of World War I. The early 20th century. Marked by warfare and by drastic social and technological changes, saw few advances in the use of Latin outside academia. Following the beginnings of the reintegration of post-war Europe, however, Latin revivalism gained some strength. One of its main promoters was the former dean of the University of Nancy, Professor Jean Capel, who in 1952 published a cornerstone article called Latin or Babel in which he proposed Latin as an international spoken language. Capel was called the soul of the movement when in 1956 the first International Conference for Living Latin took place in Avignon, marking the beginning of a new era of the active use of Latin. About 200 participants from 22 different countries took part in that foundational conference. The essentials of the classical pronunciation had been defined since the early 19th century, but in many countries there was strong resistance to adopting it in instruction. In English-speaking countries, where the traditional academic pronunciation diverged most markedly from the restored classical model, the struggle between the two pronunciations lasted for the entire 19th century. The transition between Latin pronunciations was long drawn out. In 1907 the new pronunciation was officially recommended by the Board of Education for adoption in schools in England. Although the older pronunciation, as found in the nomenclature and terminology of various professions, continued to be used for several decades, and in some spheres prevails to the present day. Contemporary Latin as used by the living Latin community has generally adopted the classical pronunciation of Latin as restored by specialists in Latin historical phonology. Many users of contemporary Latin promote its use as a spoken language, a movement that dubs itself living Latin. Two main aims can be distinguished in this movement, for Latin instruction among the proponents of spoken Latin. Some promote the active use of the language to make learning Latin both more enjoyable and more efficient, drawing upon the methodologies of instructors of modern languages. In the United Kingdom, the Association for the Reform of Latin Teaching was founded in 1913 by the classical scholar W. H. D. Rouse. It arose from summer schools which Rouse organized to train Latin teachers in the direct method of language teaching, which entailed using the language in everyday situations rather than merely learning grammar and syntax by rote. The Classical Association also encourages this approach. The Cambridge University Press has now published a series of school textbooks based on the adventures of a mouse called Minimus, designed to help children of primary school age to learn the language, as well as its well-known Cambridge Latin course to teach the language to secondary school students all of which include extensive use of dialogue and an approach to language teaching mirroring that now used for most modern languages, which have brought many of the principles espoused by Rouse and the ARLT into the mainstream of Latin teaching. Outside Great Britain, one of the most accomplished handbooks that fully adopts the direct method for Latin is the well-known lingua latina per se illustrata by the Danish linguist Hans Henning Orberg. It was first published in 1955 and improved in 1990, it is composed fully in Latin and requires no other language of instruction, thus it can be used to teach students of many different languages. For contemporary communication others support the revival of Latin as a language of international communication in academic, scientific, or diplomatic spheres. Or as an international auxiliary language to be used by anyone. However, as a language native to no people, this movement has not received support from any government, national or supranational. A substantial group of institutions has emerged to support the use of Latin as a spoken language. The foundational first international conference for living Latin that took place in Avignon was followed by at least five others. As a result of those first conferences, the Academia Latinata di Favende was then created in Rome. Among its most prominent members are well-known classicists from all over the world, like Professor Michael von Albrecht or Professor Kurt Smolik. 
The ALF held its first international conference in Rome in 1966 bringing together about 500 participants. From then on conferences have taken place every four or five years, in Bucharest, Malta, Dakar, Erfurt, Berlin, Madrid, and many other places. The official language of the ALF is Latin and all acts and proceedings take place in Latin. Also in the year 1966, Clement de Cessard published a method with tapes within the series sans pen of the French company Asimil. De Cessard's work aimed at teaching contemporary Latin for use in an everyday context, although the audio was often criticized for being recorded with a thick French accent. Asimil took this out of print at the end of 2007 and published another Latin method which focused on the classical idiom only. However, in 2015 Asimil republished De Cessard's edition with new audio CDs and restored classical Latin pronunciation. De Cessard's method is still used for living Latin instruction at the Scola Latina Universalis. In 1986 the Belgian radiologist Gaius Lykop, who had discovered the contemporary use of Latin and learned how to speak it thanks to De Cessard's method. Founded in Brussels the Fundatio Melissa for the promotion of Latin teaching and use for communication. In Germany, Marius Alexa and Inga Pessera Grimm founded in September 1987 the Latinitati v. Proof and Associatio. The first Septimana Latina Aminburgensis was organized in 1989 at Amanaberg, near Marburg in Germany, by Meshtield Hoffmann and Robertus Meyer. Since then the Latin weeks were offered every year. In addition, members of the supporting association Septimani Latine Europe published a textbook named Piper Sal that contains dialogues in modern everyday Latin. At the Academia Vivarium Novum located in Rome, Italy, all classes are taught by faculty fluent in Latin or Ancient Greek, and resident students speak in Latin or Greek at all times outside class. Most students are supported by scholarships from the Namazani Foundation and spend one or two years in residence to acquire fluency in Latin. The Living Latin Movement eventually crossed the Atlantic, where it continues to grow. In the summer of 1996, at the University of Kentucky, Professor Terence Tunberg established the first conventiculum, an immersion conference in which participants from all over the world meet annually to exercise the active use of Latin to discuss books and literature, and topics related to everyday life. The success of the conventiculum Lexingtonians has inspired similar conferences throughout the United States. In October 1996, the Septentrion All Americanum Latinitatis Vive Institutum was founded in Los Angeles by a group of professors and students of Latin literature concerned about the long-term future of classical studies in the U.S. In the University of Kentucky, Prof. Terence Tunberg founded the Institutum Studiis Latinus Proofendis, which awards graduate certificates in Latin studies addressed at those with a special interest gaining a thorough command of the Latin language and reading, writing and speaking, along with a wide exposure to the cultural riches of the Latin tradition in its totality. This is the only degree-conferring program in the world with courses taught entirely in Latin. There is also a proliferation of Latin-speaking institutions, groups and conferences in the Iberian Peninsula and in Latin America. Some prominent examples of this tendency towards the active use of Latin within Spanish and Portuguese-speaking countries are the annual conferences called Jornadas de Cultura Clásica. Com, held in different cities of southern Spain, as well as the Calv, a Latin summer program in Madrid. In 2012, the Studium Angelo Politanum was founded in Puebla, Mexico, by Prof. Alexis Helmer, in order to promote the study of Latin in that country, where only one university grants a degree in classics. Most of these groups and institutions organize seminars and conferences where Latin is used as a spoken language, both throughout the year and over the summer, in Europe and in America. Less academic summer encounters wholly carried out in Latin are the ones known as Septimane Latine Europe celebrated in Germany and attracting people of various ages from all over Europe. At the present time, several periodicals and social networking websites are published in Latin. In France, immediately after the conference at Avignon, the publisher Theodore Aubinel launched the magazine Vita Latina, which still exists. Associated to the Circam of the Paul Valéry University. Montpellier 3. Until very recently, it was published in Latin in its entirety. In Germany, the magazine Vox Latina was founded in 1965 by Kylestis Eikensier and is to this day published wholly in Latin four times a year in the University of Saarbrücken. In Belgium, the magazine Melissa created in 1984 by Gaius Lykop is still published six times a year completely in Latin. Hubdomata Enigmatum is a free online magazine of crosswords, quizzes, and other games in Latin language. 
It is published by the Italian Cultural Association Leonardo in collaboration with the online Latin news magazine Ephemeris and with Eli Publishing House. From 1989 until 2019, Finnish radio station Ula Radio 1 broadcast a weekly review of world news called Nunti Latini completely in Latin. The German radio Bremen also had regular broadcasts in Latin until December 2017. Other attempts have been less successful. Beginning from July 2015 Radio FREI from Erfurt broadcasts in Latin once a week on Wednesdays for 15 minutes, the broadcast is called Erfurtia Latina. In 2015, the Italian startup PPT Art launched its catalogue and its registration form for artists in Latin and English. In 2016, ASIM organized with Luca Desiata and Daniel Gallagher the first business Latin course for managers. The Government of Finland, during its presidencies of the European Union, issued official newsletters in Latin on top of the official languages of the Union. The ATM with Latin instructions The signs at Walzen Metro Station are in English and Latin as a tribute to Walzen's role as one of the outposts of the Roman Empire. Although less so than in previous eras, contemporary Latin has also been used for public notices in public spaces, the Walzen Metro Station of the Tyne and where Metro has signs in Latin. The Vatican City has an automated teller machine with instructions in Latin. Some contemporary works have been produced originally in Latin most overwhelmingly poetry, but also prose, as well as music or cinema. They include, various texts, usually children's books, have been translated into Latin since the beginning of the Living Latin Movement in the early 50s for various purposes. Including use as a teaching tool or simply to demonstrate the capability of Latin as a means of expression in a popular context. They include. Thanks for watching.